Man, it's been seven years. Oh, you did seven years with them? Yeah, that's the last time I uh worked in radio. All right, bet. You got one of them radio voices? No, nah, I'm just me. You know what? <laughs> and we, 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 look, people tuned in live now, so they're going to get this little story before we even get started. When I first started working in radio, uh, I thought I needed a radio voice. Okay. So I was, hey, welcome to Benjamin Lewis. <laughs> and I listened back to that shit, and I was like, hell no. I was like, I just got to be me. But this is the It's Just Words podcast. Now, where the title of the show comes from is, and it's kind of funny that Dave Chappelle just launched his new stand-up special because it comes from Sticks and Stones. Mm -hmm. So we think about when we was kids, you know, people talk about Sticks and Stones or Break My Bones, but words that never hurt me. In 2021, man, everything is so sensitive and cancel culture and this, that, and the third, man, but we just here to talk. It's just words. If you got a problem with anything that's being said on this podcast, first of all, I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. And secondly, get over it mm -hmm. or log off. Those, like is, those are your choices. I like it here. So, of course, <laughs> for my first episode, <laughs> I got to bring in my guy, Bounty Tank. Yes, sir. Fitness influencer, bodybuilder, power lifter, bounty hunter, celebrity bounty hunter, YouTube celebrity, uh, now hip-hop artist. Uh, owner of his own supplement company. What am, what am I missing? Retired stripper. Retired stripper. <laughs> <laughs> Former college football player. <laughs> hey, yo, I'm about, I'm about to dig in your shit real quick. If I put you. Yo, this dude was a nurse. Yeah. Now, six two six three. Yeah, yeah. About 270. Yeah, I was in there. So school. imagine, y'all be seeing the TikToks where the people walk in and be like, what if I broke in your house? <laughs> Imagine if this motherfucker walk in like I got to draw some blood. <laughs> hey, you can have my arm, man. You can have my whole arm. Funny story, though, when I was doing clinicals, I was teaching this lady, it was a white lady, how to uh, breastfeed. So I had to teach the baby how to latch on to the nipple. So right. I had her breast, and then her husband walked in and was like, what the fuck? <laughs> And but then, he wasn't going to get too tough, though. Hey, man, from that day on, I didn't, I didn't do no more nursing. <laughs> no more nursing. <laughs> what and, the fuck? You want her? You want her, dog? You can have her. I mean, hey, okay. oh, <laughs> so we're going to dig into a lot today. So, of course, the first thing for, shoot, the five or six people that may not know who you are, mm -hmm. um, Bounty Hunter. Like, that's, that's some real life shit. Yeah. It, it's not, ain't no kid in first grade when your teacher is like, what you want to be when you grow up is like, I want to be a bounty hunter. So how does a kid from Cleveland, you know, play ball at, at uh, one of them Catholic schools, uh, St. Joe's, St. Joe's, play ball at Hampton, mm -hmm. graduated with a nursing degree, mm -hmm. become a bounty hunter? Well, for one, we're going to change that. Kids are going to want to grow up and be a bounty hunter. <laughs> now they will, yeah. When I'm done. Right. Um, man. I went just I don't know I got done with nursing and I wanted to still do something that was that was still athletic and I could still be a man and still make an impact in the light you know make an impact in people's lives so I started looking up being a marshal and it was a hiring freeze at the time I don't know if you remember it was years back it was a big government freeze um, they weren't hiring no government jobs so I started doing some research and bounty hunt popped up and it was like kind of similar but different so I took the class. And I was still in college doing this. I took the okay. class, got a license. Man, I fucked around, met this bondsman. He gave me a case, went out there by myself, didn't know what I was doing, and caught that motherfucker. <laughs> so he just sent you out there cold. Man, I went out there and caught him so fast. I was like, I'm good at this. <laughs> and it was uphill since then. <laughs> That's it. Yep. Okay, so what? That's, that's a dangerous life, man. Like, yeah, yeah. what's the most dangerous situation you ever had to deal with man i mean the most memorable i didn't talk about this um to a couple people knock on wood this is the most dangerous time i've had so far and this was probably like nine years ago i was in detroit in the d dangerous this when i was young getting in the game you know i thought having the badge on my vest i was that dude i could do what i want <laughs> Learned a lesson. I'm in Detroit, passing out flyers, you know, 
young and dumb, a little ego. And these dudes put up like, yo, you better get the fuck off our block with that shit. <laughs> I'm like, fuck you talking to? You know, and they was like, when we get back, you better be gone. So I didn't pay no attention to them. So like, you yeah, passing out flyers about bounty hunting or? I'm passing out flyers looking for a person that was wanted. Okay, okay. So I'm okay. on the streets. I'm I'm like in the hood. I'm like eight mile. I'm I'm in the shit right. looking for this dude. And handing out flyers and they can't. It's like, get the fuck off our block with that. I didn't pay them no mind. Again, young and dumb. And probably about, hmm, I'm going to say it was 38 minutes and 52 seconds. Because I remember <laughs> when that shit happened. They pulled back up, got to shooting. Uh, I'm talking about, it sounded like fireworks. I took off running. I'm literally running for my life, man. And they shooting, still shooting, man. I'm running through an abandoned house. You know, in Detroit ain't shit but abandoned houses. Right. I'm running abandoned houses, abandoned buildings. And finally, I got away. But, I mean, they were still riding around looking for me, man. But finally, they just stopped. They got away. I mean, it was it was fucking terrifying. So, how long had you been in the bounty hunting game before you came up with the idea of being able to monetize your lifestyle on YouTube? And how did that kind of evolve? Man, once I got my first catch, I already had it in my head what I was going to do. I mean, it was, it was from day one. I knew what I was going to do. Everybody was talking about dog. I was like, I'm about to bring some new flavor to this shit. It's going to be something different. It's going to be entertaining. And it's going to be real. So, day one, okay. I knew what it was. So, speaking of like dog and what's his name? Uh, Patty Mayo and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Were there any bounty hunters in the game that influenced you? Um. Man, it was this dude, so I took a training lesson. His name was Matt Finders. He was in Virginia, in Hampton, Virginia. I went to Hampton University. And I learned a lot from this guy, and he kind of influenced me a lot to get into it. So I would say him. And then you see Dog on TV, you just, oh, man, I want to do that too. So I say seeing that motivated me. Okay. What I actually influenced was a guy. His name was Matt Finders in Virginia, and that's in the beginning. So I sense a little – disdaining your voice speaking about dog what's what's what what is that man i got, i got no problem with the buddy you know okay. uh you know he's you know he's racist okay <laughs> and he is what it so is. i don't i don't watch the cat man, so man, you know so you know i mean as far as his work i mean he did put his time in he did what he did um and that he's accomplished something that i haven't accomplished yet so i got to give him credit for that i can't hate on him for that sure. but um, I mean, I just like the racist part. Yes, you know, I don't feel like you don't. I, I, I don't that that I thought I had a past shit. Don't 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 ride with me. You know what I mean? You white man, you think you got a past to say nigga? <sighs> Come on, no, man. ain't no past. Ain't no past, man. And, and everybody knows that. So he was just trying to find an excuse. So that part of it, I don't like. So the stuff that the other bounty hunters that you see on TV and stuff like that. Um, is, is all of that stuff real? Is it staged? Is it made for TV? Like, is there are these real fugitives? Like, man, give us some insight on the game. The only bounty hunting show that is real, it is my show. Mm. <laughs> all the other shit that's on TV is is all reenacted, man. Okay, they'll get maybe pay some of the same people to come and act and reenact what really happened. Okay, think about this. Watching the popular show, everyone knows the dog. You'll get to the house, and it'll be a camera in the fucking house. Already. Already. And you don't think about that because you're just watching TV like, oh, shit. And then think about this. Every fucking episode is fucking drastic action. Man, real body hunting it ain't like that. Okay. It's not and like I, I've seen, you know, I watched the show, so I've seen the episodes where you're talking about, hey, man, I've been sitting in this car. <laughs> 13 hours, man. you know, pissing in Gatorade bottles man, on the side man. of the road. You ain't a real bounty hunter. You ain't got a bottle of piss in your car right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I remember one episode in particular, and I mean, I ain't asking you to throw none of your people under the bus, but I mean, hell, you did it in the episode mm. where uh, you had some young cats mm. that's, that started working with you recently, mm. and you telling them, you know, cover the back, cover the back. Uh -huh. I think y'all was on like Carolina or something. Uh -huh. And uh, old dude ran. Mm -hmm. Now, I've seen you. I've run with you. Mm -hmm. So I know how fast you are. So how fast was that dude to be able to get away from your ass? Or was you just out of shape at the time? What was going on with that? 
this motherfucker was a gazelle. <laughs> <laughs> this dude moved like smooth lightning. <laughs> I can't lie. And he was athletic as shit. When I watched him jump over the fence, I said, wow. <laughs> I, I gave it. I was like, you deserve this one. I'm going to catch up with your ass, but he deserved that one. He literally jumped over a fence one stride. It was amazing. He should have probably channeled his energy in the track mm. or been football player. So, he was man, oh, man. He was lightning. Now, something else I've noticed that you do, is, is this common practice in the industry, or is this just something that you do um, from your heart? You know, when you're taking people in, um, I've noticed a couple things. Mm -hmm. One, you always make sure they clear their pockets so they don't. you don't take them in with nothing that could get them another charge. Mm -hmm. And two, I've seen you get people help. Mm -hmm. um, like addicts and stuff like that. I know you were working with a program in, in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. where you were able to get them into like rehab clinics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Tell me about, you know, that part of the game for you and, and why you do that. Um, It makes me feel good, man. There's no better feeling than helping someone, man, that needs your help. And I get, I, I just get, it, it fills me with joy, man. So I really enjoy helping people. And at this, with this platform I have, and especially the work I do, and I always see people in trouble. If I'm not helping people, I'm fucking wasting this job. You know what I mean? Everything can't be about money. I was even want money to, you know, to live, but you gotta have more substance with your life, man. And helping people generally makes me feel good. So that's what I enjoy doing. If I can help somebody, if I can steer them the right path, get them some help, then I'm all for it, man. You know. Now that, that's <clears> a segue <throat> right there. Y'all know that poster with D Wade throwing it up to LeBron. He just got his arms open. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you you talking about helping people? That that lends me right into uh, what we want to talk about next. So you've transit well not transition because you, you're still doing the bounty hunter thing, but you've added to your repertoire uh, hip hop artists, mm -hmm. and your music is about the streets. Your music is for the streets, but it's speaking to the streets from a positive light about cats getting out of the game, using their talents, raising their children, and things that they can do to better themselves and better our community, what was it in you again? You know, okay, you want to help people, but what was it in you that said, you know what, I'm about to use my platform. I'm going to start making music mm -hmm. that can help our community because we know how uh, music influences people. Man, you just said it right there. What is the most the most thing that, that influences you right now? Music. Music controls the culture, how you dress, how you speak. It controls everything, music. When a, when a trend start, it start with a rapper, period. That's why these big designers go for these rappers, because they set the trends. These kids want to be rappers, you know what I mean? And just think about it, you know, you got, and <clears throat> I made a song about this. I was criticizing some of the rappers, always talking about killing somebody, man. Like, you could rap about how you grew up, what you went through, there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? You talking about your struggle, there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like at some point when you reach a certain level, you get a certain success with your music, man. You got to put some positive out there too, man. And some of them is just, God damn, like how many more people you going to kill? You didn't kill everybody. You know what I mean? And th but these kids, they they want that. You know what I mean? So me getting in this, I dress like a rapper. Some people might, you know, my, how, how I move. I look to young kids, it's, it's, it's cool. Oh, man, he cool. And then they find out what I do. Like, he what? He arrests people, and it just throws them all off. But then they get a different way of thinking, like, damn, maybe I can achieve this and not be in the streets okay. and still achieve it the same way. You know what I mean? So it's just finding a different way to touch different people, man. So you know rap game, beef, and people going at one another and this, that, and the third. With you calling out rappers for how they talk about the streets, how they talk about killing people, um, have you had any artists, other artists out there that have tried to take shots at you or uh, start rap beef with you or real beef or whatever? Um, if it was, I wouldn't put it out there. Okay. <laughs> I would just, I ain't one of them people to be talking about all that online. So if it, if, if it hasn't hit the line online, then it won't. Okay. You know, I just, yeah, I don't do that. So what was it that made you think 
yo, I can do this. And, you know, especially, you know, we're not teenagers. Mm -hmm. You know, coming into what's seen as a young folks genre, mm -hmm. at, at this point in your life, you know, with all the work that you put in, were you worried about the streets respecting what you're doing? Were you worried about the people respecting what you're doing? How did that go for you? Well, first, my motto is, I come in when I walk. <laughs> so anybody gonna tell me what the fuck I'm doing? But man, it's it's I'm gonna tell you it's weird, bro, because it's like sometimes I be around rappers that really be in the streets, and then they look at me like, nigga, what, they they just be looking kind of like, man, what he what he doing, man? He he working new? What, <laughs> what he doing? But like when people get to know me. They be like, oh, man, Tank, cool. He's just a regular dude. And I am. I'm just a regular dude, man. I just loan people money. And if they don't go to court, I got to go put them in jail. That is it. I'm not the police. <laughs> if you doing some shit criminally, that is on your ass. Only time I care is if it got to do with our money. That is it. And when people realize that and they be like, oh, man, this, this dude cool. He a normal dude. You know, it should be cool. But you, it's still people just don't like me. Now, I've heard you say that, protect the bag. Mm -hmm. You got people that, you know, feel a certain type of way about what it is that you do, mm -hmm. and they kind of look at you like the police, but tell us a little bit more about how that works. What, what it is you actually do in terms of bail bonds, what your responsibility is, what the bond's responsibility is, and then why you have to do what you do from what people see on YouTube. So let me, let me break this down. The only purpose of a bondsman is to guarantee the defendant's appearance. That is it. Now, what I do is, I'll give you an example. Say the court sets a bond at 10,000, 10%. Where I, where I do a lot of my business, that a lot of people can't afford $1,000 to get to the court. So what happens? You call a bondsman. We finance that 10%. So you say you put down, you can put down half of that and then make payments on it. So we finance, we give people time and help to pay it. Now, on the flip side of that, what makes our job risky is we put the entire $10,000 up to the court. So just imagine, like, a, say you write a, a post-data check to the court. If that person goes to court, it's voided. If that person misses court, they're going to call us, send us, send, us, send, us, send us mail, and basically say, hey, you got 45 days to find this guy, or we're cashing this check. Mm. That's, that's basically the easiest way to put it. So if these, you do these people a favor, you get them out, you know, get them out of jail, you know, it's easier to fight a case outside of jail than it is inside of jail. So literally, it's easier to protect your ass. Too. It is literally, <laughs> bondsmen, man. We we fucking helping people. We like attorneys. We should be your best friends, man. You know what I mean? So you don't go to court, we lose money. We go out of business, be on the streets with your ass. So <laughs> you you put up ten racks for somebody. Yeah, you put. Yeah. And they don't show up to court. You lose that. And then they get mad at you. Yes. Cause you asking where they at? Yes. So I ask anybody out there that's <laughs> listening right now, anybody on the streets, you load somebody ten bands, <laughs> and they just skirt on you. Wow. Gonna, it's gonna, gonna be, be bodies. You gonna be doors to right. It's gonna be bodies on the street. On ten bands. I'm just putting people in jail, and they mad about that. I'm like, what you prefer, yeah. street justice? Right. <laughs> Have the people watching bounty hunters. You Matt, know what I'm saying? Let's see one. <laughs> it, it was gonna be some different bounty hunters. I'm telling you, some people shit. Goddamn bounty hunters coming for you. People will kill you for two thousand dollars. Yeah. I mean, damn. Then when I ask them, like, man, bro, what would you do if you loaned somebody ten thousand dollars and they said fuck you? Then they'd be like. You right. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't thinking and like you gotta that. Protect the bag. Exactly. You got to protect the bag at that point. Okay, cool. So now, music, mm -hmm. bounty hunting, single dad fighting for custody of his daughter. Mm -hmm. Now. Not single. Not single. No, no longer single. No longer. Right. You gotta protect the bag and your, and your household. Yeah, <laughs> you had me get my ass cussed out. With you. <laughs> but now you've went through, and we know men, especially Ohio, is one of those states mm -hmm. where the laws are slanted heavily uh, to the mother, Definitely. even if the circumstances aren't what's best for the child. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your struggle and your fight in terms of gaining and retaining custody of your daughter. Man, it's been an ongoing battle, still going on now. Man, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, man, the court system, it fucking sucks, man. I'm gonna tell you, cause 
I feel sorry for for guys, men who don't have the financial means to fight, because then you just asked out, you can't see your kid. Because literally, if you don't have money, you can't fight, and you're gonna be left with the basic shit. You know what I mean? That's the one complaint I have, man. Like it's it's, it's too much about money, and it needs to be more so about the kids. But it's been it's been like eight years, man, and it's been a fight, man. It's been a fight. So, bounty tank for governor 2024? Hey. <laughs> uh, might go for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need to get to the state. To you can win mayor. Laws. Hey, you can win mayor. Because I can tell you, I actually worked, I worked with a cat. Uh, this had to be about 15 years ago. His was so bad because him and, and his daughter's mom lived in different counties. Mm. So, just because they lived in different counties, it made the fight that much harder mm -hmm. you know where she wasn't letting him see his daughter but yet and still they was taking that your sup mm -hmm. you know out of every paycheck mm -hmm. for those of y'all don't know what your sup is that's what the child support shows <laughs> has <laughs> on that paycheck you see that's a your sup come out of here hey, it was get a party when mine got cut off like <laughs> mine got cut off it was a party so you said that that battle is still <laughs> still going man. still going yeah so is it like every six months you in court is it like a chance that you may lose full custody. Like, what is the battle like at this point? Um, right now, it's just more so, I don't get too much. In. I'm just sealing the deal that she's permanently with me. Oh, because it's in, you can't discuss it because yeah. it's in the court. You can't. But that's pretty much it, man. Okay. Yeah. So kind of like when you don't discuss cases that yeah. you're looking for the person because yeah. you don't need information yeah. that could be used I don't want to get into Against that. you in the court. Of but it's a battle going on that I will prevail. Okay. So now, again, we're just working our way down the list. Mm -hmm. Bodybuilder. Wait, let me tell you, hey, for the guys out there that is fighting for custody or just to see a kid, I'm going to tell you this. Keep receipts, all right? On everything. You text, text, them, text. Don't talk to them on the phone. And I'm talking about the women that is bitter, the bitter baby mamas. There is some great, um, you know, moms out there. I'm talking about the ones that's bitter and the shitty ones. Don't talk to them on the phone. Text them. Keep records. Keep emails. I'm telling you. Because when it come down to it, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Mm. BBM, that sounds like a clothing line. Bitter baby mama. You need to get that printed <laughs> I up. I got a song ASAP. about that that's going to drop. <laughs> the bitter baby mama tees coming. <laughs> summer 2022. Yep. Bitter Betty's. <laughs> bitter Betty's. All right, so with everything and, you know, working late nights bounty hunting and in the studio rapping and time with your family, how do you find time? to keep your physique right, to eat right? What are some of the things that you do to keep yourself in tip-top shape? Because one, we don't, we ain't getting no younger. The only thing we're getting are older every day. And, and two, your life is on the line pretty much every time you walk out in the streets for what you got to do. So being in shape and, and being athletic, you know, is protecting your life on the streets. So how do you find time to work fitness into your life? I mean, just, it's a priority. Um, you know, uh, like you said, if I get too out of shape and just crazy and I'm out in the field looking for somebody and we get in a tussle and I just get tired, I could die. That could be my last moment. You know what I mean? Literally, you could be tussling somebody and you get tired. That could be the end of your life. So are you hitting the gym at 4 in the morning after you're done hunting? You hitting the gym in the afternoon after you get some sleep? Like – What's your what's your workout schedule like? I don't really have a schedule. I kind of I, I kind of work out twice a day. I'll box early in the morning, and then I'll go uh, lift weights later on in the day. So I go when I can. Sometimes it might be at two in the morning. Sometimes it might be five in the evening. It's just when I can when I got time, I just go. I just okay. make time. So boxing, working on the mitts. <laughs> I know some some time back you was discussing getting in the ring. Is that something you still thinking about? Man, if the money is right, I'm hopping in that thing. <laughs> is it anybody that's out there that you want to get in the ring with? Man, I don't know, man. Well, it was, it was, it was this one. It was two people. I was gonna fight them at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but why did his voice? <laughs> why did his voice go to Muhammad Ali when he said, "Did y'all catch that?" <laughs> I was gonna fight them at the same time. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I wanted to fight the two bounty hunters, man. The, the fake ones out of California. I wanted to fight. Them. What's their names? 
Man, we don't need you to say that. Oh, they don't. They don't get no love. They don't love. get no more shine. They don't man. need no shine. The only way they're gonna get shine is cool. if they get up in the ring. I got nothing against them. They cool, but I would love to fight them. It'd be good at the same time. At the same. Now, are they time. bigger dudes? Are they heavyweights too, or are they small? No, nah, they kind of small. That's why I said fight at them at the same. Oh, time. you don't mean like one and then the other. You no, mean, I mean in the ring at the exact both. Like same some wrestling shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about tag team. Yep. Okay, that's what's up. So now we want to get into some. Uh, so just popular topics okay. that's, that's out here in the streets right now. Mm-hmm. What you think about R. Kelly? Man, I think that man has some serious mental issues. I think that motherfucker needs some mental health. I think he needs to see a counselor. He needs a therapist. Because I heard that he was molested as a kid. They say that that they usually that. And passes that, that, down. That, that, yeah. fucked, that fucked him up at an early age, man. He, he ain't never been right. That's why he started messing with little kids as younger now, because he was molested as a kid. He needs some mental help. I mean, so period. now it's become a topic recently. But me being, you know, forty-two years old, I remember when we were fifteen, sixteen years old, and they were talking about this man messing with Aaliyah and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you go back to to popular music back then. Backstage, underage, adolescent, mm-hmm. new edition, like, I don't know if they wrote them lyrics or just sung <laughs> them lyrics, but Ronnie got two questionable lyrics, and then on any heartbreak, the girl was 13, oh, and, yeah, yeah. you know, when you look at how this stuff is all coming out now, mm-hmm. uh, you have the people that are saying mm-hmm. Bill Cosby, mm-hmm. R. Kelly, the things that's going on, that they're kind of going after more of the black men mm-hmm. with this. What do you think about that? Um, I think, I don't know. See, R. Kelly, nah, he fucked up. He did that shit. But Bill Cosby, Allegedly. man, I don't know. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Bill Cosby, man, I don't, I see, I don't, I'm, still, I'm still iffy about that, man. I feel like they railroaded that, man. You know what I mean? I mean... <sighs> It don't take much to, to to start bribing women to come forward if you got the money. You know what I mean? I heard he was in the process of buying, uh, what was it, NBC. CBS, NBC, NBC, and then all of a sudden this shit happens? Nah, man. Somebody dug some dirt up. You know, maybe he did do a little bad, but maybe he didn't. I think that, you know, when you're dealing with that type of, you know, people with that type of power and money, man, they can make shit happen. I think they made shit happen. I okay. mean, literally, you can pay people off. Easy. That, that, that is very. Hey, that say is, he did this. That is very much true. Okay, so now, not single. Mm-hmm. Got the wedding ring on your hand. Mm-hmm. Jada Pinkett, man. Mm. And now is is rumors mm-hmm. coming out that allegedly she was messing with who was it, Dev? I'm typing Dwayne Martin. Dwayne No no no. It was somebody when they were 15. Oh. oh, I don't know I don't about know. that. Yeah. This is me. What, what? Oh, a kid, what like happened? a young dude. What? Oh. Yeah, when she was 22. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't was, remember. I just saw the Dwayne the, Martin thing today. It was one of the singers or something back in the day mm. that was like 15 years old. The rumors is coming out. I'm about to look it up. You you got to be real careful when you Google something. You know what right. I'm saying? Yes, you do. So, <laughs> I'm about to pop up. Uh, and then they start coming after you, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. that stuff would just start popping up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this when you're doing a show and you yeah. see the 15 year old underage. What you was looking oh, up, man? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, was, yeah. Don't don't type that in there. <laughs> fucking the FBI be outside it, right now. Oh, Body <laughs> take a be outside <laughs> looking for the For the, for those of y'all on uh, Instagram, mm-hmm. if y'all know from crisscross, it was due from crisscross. Due from crisscross, the yeah. one that oh, passed bro. away. Oh, damn. They said she was messing with him when he was 15 years old. Man, back in the day, though, man, years ago, people didn't care about that, man. But man. now the question is, will it be looked upon differently in society because it's a female messing with a male as opposed to a male? Think think about this. If, if your daughter came home and was like, yo, I had sex with one of my teachers, mm. what you going to do? Whew, man. Do I gotta think that happens? Yeah, that, 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 we all know what you're gonna do, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, we, Yo, we all 15, know what we're gonna wait, do wait, here. Wait, wait. Your 15 year old son come home 
and he messing with what was the teacher's name on Martin? Uh, when Gina was about to beat her up. <laughs> Miss Trinidad. Miss Trinidad. Your 15 year old son come home and he like, yo, dad. I was clapping Miss Trinidad's cheeks. <laughs> what, you, what you gonna do? See what I'm saying? It's double standard. Now you're not, it's a double standard. It's a double standard, man. Yeah, it so is. It is. is society gonna really dig into this on mm -hmm. the Jada Pinkett tip with these alleged rumors the way that they did on the R. Kelly tip? Uh, they gonna shut down the red table? I mean, this is Jada and Will. This is black royalty uh, right here. I don't think they will, because she a female. It's just, I don't know, it just looks different. It's, it's, it's the same shit. Mm-hmm. But and and you know you know the and everybody else's eyes just kind of like oh it's a boy. Is it more okay? So do you think the double standard comes more from older men are taking advantage of young women? Definitely. Where they figure 15, 16 year old boys is just horny and happy anyway, so they're not being taken advantage of. I think that's what it is. Okay. I definitely yeah. think that's what it is. Because if it was Will Smith and Rudy, yeah. it'd be a world. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? If he, exactly. was messing with, if he was messing with, uh, what was her name? Ashley Banks. He'd be in jail right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd be in jail right now. Yeah. Although, you know, they talking about, uh, you know, Hugh Hefner. Mm. But again, that was that was a different time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when Elvis married his wife, she was 15. But that was a different time. Yeah. Different time, different era. You know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it <laughs> seems like it's been going on a long time. And now they talking about R. Kelly about to start singing. And I don't, and I, don't, I ain't talking about seems like you ready. <laughs> I'm talking about giving up names mm. of other people in this. the industry that's Ooh. been doing the same thing. This shit could get real nasty, man. So what, what's, your th what's your thought on snitches? I mean... Well, well, he pay your bills. I mean, <laughs> look, I, I love snitches. Right. They pay, <laughs> where you at? I love my informants. But as far as him... <laughs> Telling God, dude, man, it's oof. I think he just needs. Now you know what? If they is fucking with little girls, he needs to. He needs to speak. Go ahead and speak. He need to, man. I, I agree. Period. I mean, it's, it's some stuff that's just. It, it's some. You know, we we think about how it used to be, and uh, you know, the jokes have been told. You know, get them kids away from Uncle Johnny. No, no, no. Send Uncle Johnny's ass to jail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if we not responsible for what's going on in our community and and protecting our young women that become grown women and. And, 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 and our young men, mm -hmm. because it happens to, to males, too, and the trauma that they go through. Again, if somebody were to protect R. Kelly, it mm -hmm. may not have happened mm -hmm. to him, and he may not be in the predicament he's I, in I'll right now. i tell you one thing. He get to, he get to squilling. It's going to be some fire in Hollywood, man. Because you know mm -hmm. up in, man, in Hollywood, man, there's some creeps, man. Mm -hmm. So I know when he dropped the bomb, it's about to shake up some shit. So what, you, what do you think about cancel culture, man? You still listening to 12 Play and TP2.com and... Oh, man. Or is it's, it's like it's like it's like certain songs just you grew up on, but now when you hear the song, you think a little girl is like sexual songs. Listening I can't to listen the to the lyrics now. Yes. yes, none of the sexual songs, but like "Step in the Name of Love." I kind of like you know that's like, so. I can't tell you the last time I've played an R. Kelly record or mm -hmm. track, but. We out, like you say, step in the name of love, come on, or... I believe I can fly. I believe, you see, but you can't take that one away. That's, you know, that's, that's a like, classic uh, right what there. Classic, what, wait, 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 what would Hey Mr. DJ drop when that... <laughs> I'm listening to it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not changing yeah. the station. <laughs> you like, not only am I not changing the station, and I'm going to tell y'all right now, I can sing in my okay. car. Oh, I, was gonna say no. yeah. <laughs> I can sing in my car. When that hey, miss, I'm, I'm hitting them notes. Windows down and everything. Right. No, I got to oh, roll the windows man. up. Okay, all right, all right, all right. My singing is so bad. I'm he actually around. dropped so much good music. It's just crazy. So, okay, so then th that rolls me into this. Can anybody touch R. Kelly in a versus? Nah, man. It would have to be like Michael Jackson, man. Like, can yeah. Mike even touch R. Kelly in a versus? Yeah, Mike can touch, Mike can touch him. But, I, I mean, know. R. Kelly, dude, he, I don't think people realize how many hits he got, So man. this is the thing. If R. Kelly started pulling out all the joints he wrote for mm. other people. Oh, yeah. I mean, he... All the joints he just produced. His fingerprints is all over everything. All you can't the joints get rid of he them. just got cameos on. Then he just produced something for Drake on this mm -hmm. movie. Yep. Yeah. CL on CLB. What yep. he had turntables in, in the in the house? In yeah, the big house? I don't know what he did. He did something. He, did <laughs> he wrote something, something on some toilet paper <laughs> in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Did they record it over a cell phone over the he, phone? Man, look like, at this, man. This 
I'm about to pull this up. Is that the list of all this the is the list of all the damn songs R. Kelly done written, man. Bruh. That, that's, that's, oh, those are just the ones he's written. This is the ones he's written. His, that's his wild. resume wow. is, 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 I mean, you can't, you wild, can't take man. it away from him. I'll, if I, this shit would have never happened, he would have went down as one of the, the he'd greatest. He'd be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, I mean, he yeah, went he down one of the greatest. Would. He is, well, I, hey, he, hey. He's still music wise, you look, can't take it away from him. Yeah, look, he he OJ ever. Simpson was still the best running back in the league. He yeah. still yeah, won the Heisman. Yeah. He was still the man at USC. Jim Brown. Shit, Jim yeah, Brown. Brown and, yeah. and, and, Tossing and, women off the board. Off the balcony. That one is always, look, I ain't going to lie. JD is tough for me. Because whenever I see him and I get to talk to him, it's Jim Brown. <laughs> but he hits women. Yeah, yeah, like man. that is, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's difficult because it, it's like two separate people that you see. Mm, you fell in love with the football player. Ain't well, I ain't that. never fell in love with a man. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but oh. you see, you know, there's very few athletes I'm a, I'm a fan of mm-hmm. Jim Brown I'm I'm a fan and and not even just as an athlete but the things that he did for to, and to see him back Trump after the things he did for our community mm-hmm. you know and everything like that I was a fan of Jim Brown I was he was a fan in movies of, too wasn't he yeah, yeah that's why he retired movie, yeah. that's why he retired because our model was stupid nah, my our, bad our Kelly wrote a lot of songs a lot of tracks <laughs> I didn't know he wrote shoot the he XL, like either. the way from Wait and XL. I didn't know that man, either. Man, R. Kelly wrote a lot of songs, man. man. I didn't know that either. Friend of mine, Kelly. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he can do a verse. Ke- that's what I'm saying. Off the stuff he wrote. Bruh, you know he'll be man? pulling out tracks that you be like, oh, damn, that's you? He wrote Cry by R- uh, by Michael Jackson. <laughs> how you- uh, hey, look. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, how people be talking about Mike uh, bought Eminem's catalog, R. Kelly mm. going to be like, okay, it's cool. <laughs> Go ahead and sing that one I wrote. <laughs> You know what Damn, I'm saying? That's like, wild, man. he need to do a versus from jail. From j- from <laughs> he, who who he gonna do a versus with himself? I don't know, man. They have to put a collection of people together. He would have to go against. He would have to go against Drake or something, man. That still and it's ain't two different two different genres. That still ain't it. Drake well, somebody gonna only, have to, Drake or Wayne would be the only people right. got the type. Of somebody gonna have to have a booster. You know, like Drake is hot right yeah. now, and yeah. he got a lot of loyal fans right now. So Drake could, you know I what still, I mean? I think Mike the only one you could yeah, put Mike, against yeah, him, Mike, but I still yeah. think. And the only reason I say Mike would have a chance is because it's just 20 songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So if you he take Mike's 20, top 20. Yeah, yeah, Mike's top 20 is. And you take R. Kelly's top 20, <laughs> yeah. I, I'll say Mike has. Yeah. Because, you know, when you talking about man in the mirror, yeah, yeah. you know. Mike top 20 is going in like, you know what I mean? It's in the Smithsonian. Like Mike's top 20 is different. It, it, it's way different. They're I strong, mean, man. they both strong. Mike man. just gonna come out on stage and he gonna win because he gonna stand there for ten minutes and let everybody faint. <laughs> I don't know. I think if over. they went against each other on the stage, performer wise, it'd be good, man. No. You know, R. Kelly could he's a good performer. Yeah, too. but he ain't putting on doing the little butterfly from nineteen ninety three. I mean, that, that, <laughs> he ain't putting on crowd, that crowd. They love that. Now that's one thing. Ain't nobody touching Mike for no concert. <laughs> Nah, Mike, Mike could kill him today. One thing, my bad. One thing I can say about R. Kelly, I saw him at the Wall He's Street Center. He's a good performer, though. Dude sound like the CD, man. I've never R. heard Kelly? a singer sound. Yeah, yeah, R. Kelly sounds exactly. The only person I've ever heard that was Jill Scott. Oh, okay. And mm-hmm. I heard, you can't listen to Jill Scott in a huge arena. Mm. It's got to be an intimate setting. I heard her at Playhouse. Okay. And I was in, like, the second row. And so I got two, two fan moments. One with Jill Scott, one with Beyonce. The one with Beyonce, I ain't gonna lie, I turned into like a whole bitch. <laughs> but with Jill Scott, <laughs> she hit one of them operatic notes mm-hmm. and it like reached into my chest and massaged my soul. Damn, that's deep. And a single tear wow. just rolled down my cheek. Damn. I ain't gonna lie. I, I, hey, I'm a man, and at the end of the day, I'm a man. <laughs> but Jill Scott's voice massaged my soul and made so, me cry. So you, you watched The Notebook and cried, didn't you? I didn't cry, but I love that movie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. On Saturday afternoon, if I'm flipping and the notebook is on, I'm putting the remote down. Your Saturday is made now. I like I like rom coms. I like how to lose a guy in ten days. That's a good movie. I like I like all the joints. No, I'm I'm gonna tell you a movie I like that I would never tell nobody. But I'm gonna go ahead and expose myself. I like that movie Angry Girls, man. That's I I've never, never seen, seen Angry fuck, Girls. What? No, no, mean Girls. Mean Girls. Yeah. So I've heard that. I've heard I gotta watch Mean Girls. I've heard yeah, it's, Mean it's Girls is really funny, good. Fucking... But now my Beyonce story. I'm sitting front row. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting right next to Floyd Mayweather. Right. Well, I'm sitting right next to one of Floyd Mayweather's 
security guards, mm-hmm. and then it was Floyd Mayweather. Was Close guard. enough. But we sit in front row, and Beyonce on stage, and she did the uh oh, mm-hmm. and a piece of sweat. <laughs> 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 it, hit, no, 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 no. it hit me in the forehead. <laughs> And I turned into the chick from Five Heart. <laughs> I'm in the chair. Oh. This nigga wild. Did, did, did you marinate it in your forehead? <laughs> look, I took a shower. I didn't wash my face for like a week, though. Oh, I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I was a fan. Oh, man. That's At deep. that moment, wow. when I had a bead of Beyonce sweat. Oh, man. Hit me in the forehead. I mean, people can say they felt her sweat. I mean, right, it's true. Sure, right. Man. I am true. in a very, very small, very small category. Class of people, and we know how she oh. feel about them Sagittarius. So oh, she need man. to go. Well, anyway, you Sagittarius too? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, man. Me you too. Know, brother. On, December fifth, man. You know how we do. Oh yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> now my only other famous concert moment was kind of embarrassing. I went to the Jamie Foxx concert and uh, had floor seats, and I was late. Ooh. So one of the Jamie wasn't on stage, okay. but the comic right before Jamie was on stage. And uh I'm walking down and I saw one of my boys I played ball with and I'm dapping him up mm-hmm. and my back is to the stage. And the dude said, Damn, look at this big no neck motherfucker <laughs> right here. <laughs> So I, I, I said, is he talking about me? <laughs> he was like, yeah. I said, am, am I on the big screen? <laughs> he was like, yeah. Damn. Like, so now, if you know comics, you don't never go back at a comic. Uh-huh. So I turned around like, ah, you got me. <laughs> so I walked to my seat, and the only thing, he was, he was on me for about 10 minutes. Damn. The Ooh. only thing that saved me, when I sat down, it was a dude sitting behind me with a leather vest on with no shirt. <laughs> oh, he had it coming. So when I sat down, he saw him. Oh, oh shit. And got on him, and the dude tried to go back at him. Oh, did he? So then his entire 40-minute set became roasting <laughs> this dude. And I was like, whoo. But I had, man, I checked my phone after the concert, and I had so many texts. Everybody was like, man, you forget your ass mm-hmm. on, on the big screen, You ain't quick man. with the comebacks, man? Huh? I would have came back at him. No, not at a con- no twenty thousand people. I got jokes. Nah, we we was at the, the, it was the, Q- the famous last the- words. I'm gonna get this. No nigga. sir, this I'm not. Com- I'm not. Look, I'm I'm conversation funny. I'm not shooting the dozens with no comic. Man. I at least try to shot one or two at them. <laughs> All right, so before we get out of here, we on mm. IG live. Uh, if anybody's got any questions for Tank, go ahead and shoot. Your questions right now before we get out of here. If anybody's got any questions, I'm on here. I got. I. I. I uh. I'll read them out to you. Okay, bet. You, can, you know what I'm saying. Ain't nobody starting no rumors to read. <laughs> <laughs> so just so y'all know, while we wait and see if anybody got any questions coming in, we over here every second Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So every other Wednesday. So every other Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um. Every episode, y'all make sure y'all go. Check out 216 Muscle on YouTube. Every episode will be posted on the YouTube channel. Make sure y'all following Bounty Tank on YouTube. And I'm going to tell y'all like this. Whenever I see anybody that's part of a network, on a network, got shows, like I'm on 50 Cent's page every other day. Uh, Bounty Tank show, hashtag, man, get at my guy. I'm on T.I.'s page, but he working through his own stuff. They say he ain't going to even be in the next Ant-Man movie because, you know, he working through his stuff. I'm on Diddy's page. Anybody that's got a platform, I be tagging them, man. We need to get Bounty Tank Show on mm-hmm. Netflix, man, on, listen. on something where you can cuss, though. It can't, we, we, we can't, we, we can't we, be bleeping it out. We working on something right now, man. I got something in the works. Now, that's what man, I like so. to hear. That's, that's what I like up, to hear. Man. So Next before year. we get out of here, um, you just relaunched your supplement company. Mm-hmm. Tell people about that for me. Man, I have an amazing product. Amazing. Actually, two, but the first one is called a drilling and chest. No, I need that second one, like ASAP. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, you um, know, we get, yeah. I'm in my 40s. I need that testosterone, man. My girl <laughs> yeah, going to be like, what the fuck booster, you man. Doing, you got to keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> keep it going and keep it I'm growing. I'm taking two <laughs> doses. <laughs> back to back. That's all but night. tell Yeah, tell them about that. Yeah, nah, but drilling and chase, man, it's a, it's a great product for energy. Fuck all them energy drinks, man. Fuck all that other stuff y'all taking. It's bad for you. 
Adrenaline Chase is natural ingredients and it's time release to keep you going all day. But best of all, this sound like infomercial. Best of all, you don't crash. What you don't, you don't I, crash, I, keep I, that shit I, all day. Not only am I a client, no. So <laughs> I, take, I take the Adrenaline Chase mm -hmm. and that's one thing I can tell you, no jitters. No jitters. No crash. No crash. And I can still sleep at night. Mm -hmm. So with a lot of these, you know, energy products and stuff like that, and we got it up on the screen, so y'all will see it on there on uh, YouTube. We, uh, this, 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 I want to make sure. That's it right there, yep. Yeah. So Relentless Pursuit Nutrition, got the Adrenaline Chase. At the end of the night, I don't take no melatonin. I don't have to take nothing. So now I'm up every day at 3.30 in the morning, and I take it as soon as I get up. So I take about 4 o'clock before mm -hmm. I do my morning cardio or whatever. And then I take it again about noon. Mm -hmm. Keep it going all day. And I don't have no – yeah, because, I mean, yeah. my day starts at 5 – well, my day starts if I do my cardio in the morning at 4 a.m. with my cardio. Clients at 5 a.m., and then my day doesn't end until my classes are done at 7 p.m. So it keeps me going all day. I don't have no issues sleeping at night. So that's a beautiful thing. No crash, mm -hmm. no jitters. So, and it is a great for mood enhancer. Say you're having a shitty day, mm -hmm. you pop one of them. You're like, oh man, you know what? Fuck it. You know, you just it just puts you in a great mood, man. Uh, you could use it for a. Uh, um, ah, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, fat burner. It's also a fat burner. Great for fat burner. So I mean, I'm gonna show y'all the third. I'm tracking it. Multiple things to do. It's a great product. I man. took my before pictures. I can't show y'all those until I get the after <laughs> pictures. Oh, yeah. I'm in my 30 day shred right now. It's it was about to get real. Look, being on the road and on tour and traveling and stuff like that, man, I'd be out here eating good. It's hard, though. Missing oh, yeah. when you're going city to city, missing yeah. workouts. So it had got a little loose in the cage. So, but I'm, I'm back <laughs> on it. I'm back on it. So I'm going to show y'all this 30 day transformation. It's going down. Uh, we got any questions on there? No, I think people just j jumping in to watch. They enjoying the show. All right, so uh, we gonna get ready to get out of here. Is there anything? Tell the people where they can find you. You can, everybody can find me on every platform at Bounty Tank Music, Bounty you know, Tank, TikTok, Tank, YouTube, Bounty Tank, TikTok, Bounty Tank, IG, Bounty Tank, Facebook, Bounty Tank, anything. Be the brand. Bounty Tank. Yep, you gotta be on brand. Hey, did you see that video I did when I was talking about when I didn't read the instructions to the edible? Nah. You didn't see that video? Nah. Yeah, nigga, you got to watch that and tell me what you think of that. It's on TikTok? No, nah, it's on it's on IG. Yeah, I'm going to have to check that one out. Yeah. But see, I already know what it's like when you don't read the instructions. I know. Were well, you talking about me? <laughs> yes. Oh! <laughs> 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 it's on IG? Yep. <laughs> Can you pull that up? <laughs> God, I it. Oh! I almost died. I almost died. Yo, yo. Look, it's, it's we had some <laughs> chocolate covered cookie brownie it's the one pretzel my face. The one my face this one yep. chocolate okay. covered right. cookie brownie <laughs> pretzel edible and it just was so good i kept eat oh my god uh, i want i think i liked it too yeah the two uh, the audio, look i saw it the audio ain't coming on the audio ain't oh. coming on uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got you got to hear the audio hey, the audio oh, ain't coming on the audio oh, the audio the audio go, the audio gonna kill you through the uh, through the <laughs> The audio kill you. Damn, oh, hold on, hold on. I'm about to find a way. They're going to hear it through the mic. Yeah, they're through the mic. Yeah. Damn. Oh, no. You ain't blast me out like that. Hold on. Let me see if I can. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, that's how you was at <laughs> you talking about. So what happened? All right, so now I gotta tell the story. Bill was busted, man. Oh, man. Damn. Bill was busted, man. So we was going, and this is what's crazy. Oh shit. Oh, we you was good. going. You, you got it. Welcome to T-Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> strong guy. They're breaking shit. Oh, strong. Good, man. Man. So uh, we were going uh on a beach part on a party bus. Down to the beach, we was going to Edgewater. And we started at Forward. Mm -hmm. So it was supposed to be party bus, kick it, beach, back to Forward. <laughs> Tank picked me up at the crib. He had a pan. Yeah. Oh, shit. It was a whole pan. And when we first got there, he like, you know, so I tried a little bit. And we riding. 
I don't feel shit. <laughs> and the pan is in my lap. Like I'm holding, you know the silver pans with the little hey. plastic clear lid. Hey. I'm holding it so that it don't topple over. Oh shit, man. So it's sitting in my lap. And again, it was a chocolate chip cookie, mm-hmm. brownie, with mm-hmm. pretzels. With a pretzel on top, mm. covered in chocolate. It was delicious. Oh, it sounds It was good. so good. So that's where I fucked up. Because <laughs> it was so good. So I ate the first piece. We hey, get downtown. Hey. I'm like, man, I'm gonna go ahead and snatch one more piece before we get on this bus. He took it like a thousand milligrams. Cause I'm I ain't feeling shit. And what's fucked up is he ain't hey. stopped me. He didn't even say nothing hey. like you sure. This nigga was sedated, nigga, man. That's your nigga for real. Niggas will so let you look, drown. Niggas like, all right, go ahead. We ride on the party bus and and mind you. <laughs> Oh, shit. It ain't nothing on this bus. We was the only was it only us and one of one or two other dudes? Yeah, man. And then it was like 20 <laughs> fit females in bathing suits. I can't tell you now one that was on the bus Dude. this day. Like I know who was there. But he, so he was sitting there with his head down, I, just pacing. I'm like, Bill, you good? I'm no. Okay. <laughs> He's I'm like, no, up. I'm not okay. <laughs> I started sweating <laughs> profusely <laughs> for no reason. The air conditioning is on on the bus. It's cold as fuck with the bus. I'm <laughs> sweating profusely and I'm rocking back and forth. I thought it was mess. He just looked so at me and was like, <laughs> you fucked bad. up, ain't you? I was like, yes. Hey. So we riding. Ladies is <laughs> dancing from what I hear. Like I saw videos mm-hmm. on Instagram oh, two days later. They dancing, they twerking. I think I got a lap dance. I don't remember. So we get down to Edgewater. I'm thinking I'm about to just stay on the bus. I'm going to sleep this shit off. Everybody has to get off the bus. Oh, and it was like 95 degrees that day. I'm hurting. <laughs> so I found some shade to sit in. I just knew I was going to throw up. I found some shade to sit in because it was so hot. And I was hot on the bus with the air conditioner. Hey, Look, I went and got, hot, I drank hot. a bottle of water on the bus, but it was room temperature. It did nothing for me. <laughs> I got a basket of chicken fingers and some fries. Murdered them. And an ice, <laughs> ice cold <laughs> bottle of water. And I felt human again. <laughs> they was like, yo, we about to go over to the Cleveland sign and take a picture. If anybody got this picture, man, they got to find that shit. I think on the way there, it hit you again. <laughs> I went behind the Cleveland sign. I'm leaning. <laughs> Because that's the only thing that's holding me up. So I'm leaning on the Cleveland sign. Then they stopped at a pizza joint on the way back at Angelo's. Get some pizza. On. I couldn't eat nothing. I'm hurting. So then we get back to forward. Tank like, yo, you trying to go to this pool? I'm like, no. I need to go home now. Dude, that's, that is fucking I weird. probably got back. We probably He probably dropped me off about 7 p.m. Mm. I slept till Monday. Jeez. I Man. slept till Monday afternoon. I was in bed. I was in that hot. I wasn't, I was still high the next day. <laughs> I slept. Until, I did not get out of the bed oh, until Monday afternoon. That's the highest I've ever been in my <sighs> life. That's a bad experience. My and it wasn't even, it wasn't my first time taking it, it again. I took a piece on the way down. It was about a half hour, you know, coming from <laughs> South Euclid down, <laughs> okay, to, good. down to forward. I'm like, it's been a half hour. I ain't feeling nothing. Let me get a little bit more. And then we was about 10 minutes into the bus ride. It, was, it just hit me. And it was over. Oh, I couldn't man. move, bro. Yeah. I, I don't even know how I got off and back on the bus. You like, was, you was you fucked up. It was that bad. Yeah. It was, was that bad. Up. Damn, you ain't tagging me in that shit though. But no, no I did not I, know that, I that shit. Wanna, I ain't gonna put you. That on the was bus. jacked up. I ain't gonna put you on the bus. You ain't have to bring that shit up. That shit was fucking. Put that crazy. shit out there for. It everybody. Made me feel good about my first time. <laughs> but and that's the thing is it wasn't my first time having one, but but now so what I do if I do edibles because I don't really like uh, sweets. I mm-hmm. like cookies, cakes, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I'll do the sour patch. Mm-hmm. Or because I know I won't eat mm-hmm. a bunch of those. Mm-hmm. I'll eat one, wait an hour, see how I'm feeling. <laughs> you pace it now, huh? Yeah, <laughs> and then maybe do a second one. But <laughs> yeah, that was a. Uh, I had to tell you my experience one day. That was a rough experience. We'll get, you, we get you back one. on here because we got some yeah. more stuff to no, talk shit, about. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about. Yeah, we definitely got to get you back on here, man. We got to talk about you being in Source Magazine. 
we got to talk about what you got coming next. Uh, you said you're working on some, so you know, hopefully, shit, we can get you on here and make an announcement on the Is Just Words podcast. It so again, we here every other Wednesday, y'all. Make sure y'all check us out. Follow Two One Six Muscle on YouTube. That's where the full episodes will be posted, so y'all can check them out. And we'll see y'all in two weeks, man. Peace.